Hello folks, welcome. Tuxedo OS 3. It's a KDE Plasma desktop and it's made for beginners. Um, some of you folks have read my mission statement and some have not, but uh, I target a lot of videos toward beginners for Linux. So I'm going to give you full details on Tuxedo, give you a tour and overview. You can see my hardware information here. It uses a 6.5 series kernel. I'll probably end up giving you full system information later. So again, welcome folks. I am filming in 4K today. 4K. One more reminder of that. So you can adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary. Subscription key is in the corner if you've never heard of my channel. Got almost 400 videos. So let's get this out of the way. I'm going to go to DistroWatch and explain a little bit about Tuxedo OS. So Tuxedo OS is out of Germany. They only offer one desktop, it's KDE Plasma, and it's a beginner's category. Live medium, so you can test drive this. I don't use the popularity factor at all on DistroWatch, but I like their layout. Their website is tuxedocomputers.com. And uh, you may get a translation thing from German to English, but uh, more importantly, the ISO is at the bottom if you'd like to try to test drive this yourself. I'm using this particular one here. This is um, version 6 Plasma. 3.6 gigabyte download. Burn that onto a USB sticker or you can burn that onto a DVD. Let me get this out of the way here. So um, I'm using the X11 environment for many reasons. Personally, I don't think Wayland is ready for prime time. There's way too many glitches I see on this. I logged into the Wayland environment, and you can too on Tuxedo, out of your login screen. Down here in the left-hand corner, you'll see that option. It's very small, though. What doesn't work in Wayland? Well, simple screen doesn't work in Wayland and never has. The other thing that didn't work in Wayland, which is a biggie with some people, is KRunner. I couldn't get it to work in there, but it works fine in X11. So I've heard there's a major distribution that is thinking about dumping X11 packages and going with nothing but Wayland. All I got to say is good luck on that one. I don't believe this is ready for prime time. I use way too many distributions to see some of the remnants and problems with Wayland currently. Until all those bugs are worked out, I would probably make sure that someone stays with X11 environment until they're ready for prime time because I've seen way too many bugs with Wayland. Let me now continue. So again, I'm filming in the X11 environment. So I use double click and the, a lot of reasons I use double click is because I use a lot of script files sometimes and I don't want to mistrigger it if I'm moving it if single click is turned on. So you will find that double click is activated by default. It's background images, configuration, and I'm going to still give you a tour of this. I'm just giving you a quick overview here. Okay, you can always back this video up. All right, where to start? Well, why don't we do talk a little bit about software. S Discover Software Center, you can also add Synaptic Package Manager. It does not come installed by default. You can add Synaptic through the uh, Discover Center. You don't have, have to use Terminal if you don't want to. However, the reason I installed that, I wanted to give you a package count. How many pieces of software are in here roughly? All right, so roughly there's 89,303. I'm sure you can find a thing or two. 2266 are installed. You have a search feature over here. You can do it by name, name and package. This again is Synaptic, and this is the Debian logo. Where's the software coming from? Repositories. Let me open this up. The only one that's missing is Flatpak because Synaptic doesn't contain Flatpak software. The software store does. Software Center. Pretty simple to install anything in here. Mark it for install. It requires other stuff. You mark that and you hit apply. You can also uh, view installed stuff, providing it's not Flatpak. 
and I have a setting turned on that I normally turn on always. This is off by default. Show package um, properties. If you don't turn that on, you can always right click and do the properties and it'll give you all the tabs. I like to just see it down here. Just to give you an example of what I'm looking at, uh, you can move this around also. Is, and you can also go full screen if you like. Common information, who the maintainer is, installed latest dependencies, and where they are on your system, where they stored on your hard drive. Some people don't care about this stuff, and some people do. All right, I'm going to minimize that. 89,303. Again, that does not include Flatpak. So let's go over to this area here. All right, so this is uh, the Home Discover software store, if you want to call it that, the software center. You can get a lot of applications through here. You may want to take a look at something that looks like Photoshop, which is GIMP. And uh, here's the install key. Here's some of the screenshots, just to give you a couple of examples. Very pleasant software store. You can check for updates in here, just do a refresh. And here's where the software is coming from. So unlike Synaptic, there's Flatpak software in here from FlatHub. If you don't like Flatpak software, you can turn it off. The uh, other thing that I don't really care for are Snap packages, but they're here also. If you want them, you need to install it. It does not come installed. Neither does Synaptic, but you can find Synaptic in the Discover Store by typing for it. And then you can install that. Or you can use Terminal. Don't forget those uh, plasma add-ons. There's a whole bunch of them, and I installed one global theme out of here. And uh, more importantly, it's a very pleasant software discover center store. Software center discover. Synaptic package manager and terminal are three ways to install software. Again, Synaptic does not come installed. You can install it though. All right, all of these shortcuts come just like they are. And KRunner is always listening. What do I mean by that word? Anytime you type on your keyboard is what I mean by that. So if I type in KO, it comes up with console. That's what I mean by listening. So basically you're typing and it, uh, KRunner is guessing. KRunner did not work in Wayland, by the way, FYI. I'm gonna increase this and I'm gonna give you full system information. I had a user the other day leave me a funny message trying to educate me on how to use INXI. I thought it was humorous. I've been doing this for many years. And there's a reason I use this option instead of the one he recommended. It strips out personal information, but it gives me all the stuff that I need for these videos. There are many options with INXI. I'm well aware of those. I've been doing this for many years. Been doing stuff since the Unix days. Anyways, let's move on. 6.5 series kernel. This is Plasma 6.1.2. Tuxedo OS 3, based off of Ubuntu 22.04 long-term support jamming. If you care, I'm using an AMD Ryzen 7 and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. I think that's pr probably good enough. Alt and F4 to close this window, which you can do with any window in here. All right, KRunner. So remember that, it's just sitting there waiting for you to type something. You can certainly use the search feature in here. Now I'm gonna drop through the menus and let you see what's installed and I'll make mention of the stuff that I did install. So Kate's an advanced text editor, I use that quite often. Also with other distros that I write uh, script files with. All right, you got four games installed, I didn't install these. All right, you've got uh, Ocular Document Viewer. It's kind of nice. Gwen View works with your file manager also. And Firefox, the web browser, you can install others. And you've got uh, the Thunderbird uh, email client. I added Simple Screen. Again, it does not work in the Wayland environment. Never has. And uh, OBS Studio does, and, but it's glitzy in, in Wayland. And Spectacle is your screenshot tool for, for the Plasma desktops. And if you are in Wayland, it does have a recording tab, but it doesn't record sound. So again, glitzy in my book. All right, LibreOffice is uh, version 24. I believe it's the, the latest. And you also have Ocular here for a document viewer. You can view all kinds of documents through that. 
So another one here, Synaptic, again, it does not come installed. However, you can get it from the Discover Software Center or you can use Terminal to install Synaptic. Synaptic does not contain Flatpak software, so one more time on that one. Here's another tool in the system area for writing ISO images uh, versus uh, this tool here, sorry, here. Okay, where was I? Yep, I'll stop here. Partition Manager, another shortcut to console, which is Terminal. Um, your Password Manager, another shortcut to Synaptic, and also the Tuxedo Control Center, which you'll also find on your panel. There's all kinds of shortcuts. There's another one, and Utilities. There's Spectacle, the screenshot tool. If you're in the X11, you will not see the Recording tab. You have to be in Wayland for that. But again, it does not record sound. Uh, two of the, I think the two formats are uh, WebM and uh, I want to say MP4. But again, it doesn't work with sound, so I don't use it. Okay, help. It's searchable. You can click on that. Places. Sleep, restart, shut down, pretty basic keys. And um, again, if I did make mention of that, this, if you grab the corner with your computer mouse, you can resize that. You try that with a touchpad and you'll have a good old time. I don't care for touchpads for many reasons. So let's open up this settings box. You have a whole host of things to play with. If you're fairly new to Plasma, this could be overwhelming for some users. Just remember, you're looking for something. You can do it by categories. All right, so this is the most used here that I played with, global themes. The default theme is Tuxedo Twilight. They gave you these six. I added this through the Discover Software Center. I did not go through Get New. I actually added it directly through the Software Center. So there's a tab in here uh, for Plasma add-ons, global themes, F and FYI. Would you like to see what it, this one looks like? <clears throat> this may not be your cup of tea, but I will just activate that. And anytime you do this kind of stuff, I actually recommend that you log in and out because sometimes it changes mouse cursors also. Again, this may not be your cup of tea. That's the file manager. And I'll go to the standard ones. And I'll talk a little bit about the file manager um, shortcuts in a minute. Just wanted to give you a perspective. Now I'm going to switch back to that. Just the appearance. All right. So again, there's lots of bells and whistles in here we can play with. I could spend probably another half an hour in there for that. Again, I do recommend that if you do this kind of stuff, you uh, log in and out of your system. And especially if you change mouse cursors. <clears throat> a lot of times when you change cursors, you will see the remnants of old and new. That's your number one clue that something changed. Sometimes a, a full restart is uh, probably best, but bare minimum, log in and out. All right, where did I leave off? I think I'm done with this box. Panel, if you notice, the panel doesn't reach to the end. I can still see blue here on both sides. So let me start over here on the right-hand side, probably where my subscription key is. You have a calendar thing, a multifunction key. You also have vaults in here to uh, create encrypted vaults and other stuff. So uh, display configuration can be found here or you can right click on the screen. One more reminder. I'm filming in 4K if you need to adjust your YouTube player. All right, so we have the wireless thing, the volume things, and the clipboard and uh, simple screen recorder, and another shortcut to the Tuxedo Control Center. Again, this is a tool that is normally not found on other Plasma desktops. I'm going to right click on the panel. Start with Add Widgets. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. You can always pause the video and go in reverse. There's lot, these are just toys if you're fairly new to Plasma that you can add. And you can get new ones. There's all kinds of widgets. I'm going to exit the edit mode. Then I'm going to right click again and do show panel configuration. If you don't like the panel on the bottom, 
The first one is position. When you click it, it gives you the three other locations where your panel is currently, mine is at the bottom. I don't get an arrow there, but I get an arrow left and right, and I can choose the top. If I click this again, now I have a down arrow, so I can move it back. Panel height is here, and there's some other stuff in here. Lots of options. Again, I'm not going to spend um, a lot of time talking about customization. Okay, so I gave you a fairly decent taste of what this looks like. Uh, again, you can go to DistroWatch if you like and uh, download it from there or go for the link through there. Um, so it's, it's rated at 20 currently. Again, I don't use that particular thing. And uh, that would mean that if you go over to here, you look for number 20. There's Tuxedo right there. If you are not a subscriber, here's my channel. And I'll talk about a couple of features if you become one. First of all, I have 397 videos currently. And uh, here's my mission statement. And I have a couple of links for you. Okay. I'm going to close that. So there's a search feature right here if you're using a standard browser on YouTube. There's one here too. This one here is very special though. This search is my internal YouTube site. And you can do it by keywords. I'll use Tux. Oh, there we go. Here's a video from nine months ago. Here's a video from one year ago. You get the idea? Okay. I'm going to close that and say thank you for watching.